term genocide is of relative recent origin. It was introduced by Raphael Lemkin, a Polish and American lawyer of Jewish origin. In 1945 to 1946, he was an advisor to the U.S. Supreme Court at the Nuremberg International Military Tribunal. The term genocide was adopted after this trial. However, Russian Empire, also known as USSR, conducted genocides well before the introduction of the term. During the Caucasus War in 1817 to 1864, the Russian Empire killed or relocated from their historical lands about 90% of Czech's population. USSR's Stalin regime was especially active in applying genocidal policies. It used it against Ukrainians, Poles, Crimean Tatars, Chechens, Ingushes, and many others. On November 28, 2006, the Ukrainian parliament adopted the law on Holodomor in Ukraine in 1932-1933. This law defines the event as the genocide of Ukrainians. As of 2022, 17 countries officially recognize Holodomor as genocide. Holodomor was a planned atrocity organized by the Kremlin and its minions in Ukraine. In addition, it was a class-based terror that a proletariat dictatorship state applied against the peasants with the so-called ownership psychology of small bourgeoisie. Joseph Stalin and his cronies wanted to completely subdue Ukrainians with terror by hunger. It was a way to overcome the resistance of peasants to the Soviet regime. Kremlin was scared of peasants' mass uprising against the collectivization policies. During the 1930-1932 period, there were over 5,000 different uprisings. The main reasons for Holodomor were forced collectivization, unrealistic plans for grain supply, mass repressions, confiscation of property and false deportation of peasants, it was slightly richer than in total poverty. Confiscation of property and false deportation of peasants, who was slightly richer than in total poverty. In 1932, Ukraine did not implement the plan for grain supply. After that, a special Communist Party commission, headed by Molotov, came to Ukraine to confiscate all crops. Those villages and districts that did not supply grain according to a plan were blacklisted. They were encircled by the military and the police, cut off from any travel and trade. People were left with no food and no chance to escape. Seed grain was confiscated too. By early 1933, there was almost no food left in Ukraine. The entire villages were dying out. According to the Institute of Demography of the Ukrainian Academy of Science, almost 4 million people died in Ukraine during the Great Famine of 1932-1933. During the Communist rule, famines happened in Ukraine also in 1921-1933 and in 1946-1947. There are no precise estimates of the number of victims. Approximately, it was several millions. From 1937 to 1938, Stalin's militia implemented the so-called Polish Operation, mass repressions against Soviet citizens of Polish origin. The NKVD documents show that 133,000 people were arrested at that time. Of them, 139, which is 97%, were found guilty, and 111,000 were shot, with the rest sent to Gulag concentration camps. This massacre affected 16% of Poles that lived in the USSR. In February-March of 1944, Stalin's militia deported Chechens and Ingushes from the Caucasus to Central Asia and Kazakhstan. According to various estimates, 500 to 650,000 people were deported at that time. During the deportation, in the two following years, up to 100,000 Chechens and up to 23,000 Ingushes died, about a quarter of each nation. Around the same time, the Soviet regime organized yet another genocide, this time in Crimea. May 11, 1944, State Defense Committee decree about the deportation of Crimean Tatars stated that the reason for the Crimean Tatar deportation was that during the World War II, many of them betrayed their motherland and switched to the enemy side. The decree ignores the fact that all the people that were occupied by Germany had instances of collaboration with Nazis. The irony is that the majority of collaboration was among Russians. Over 400,000 of them were fighting on the German side. The Crimean Tatar deportation operation started in the early morning of May 18, 1944. It was completed at 4 p.m. on May 20th. Crimean Tatars had only 30 minutes to pack their belongings, after which they were transferred to railway stations and sent by trains to the places of exile in Central Asia and distant regions of Russia. Official NKVD reports tell 
that 183,000 people were deported and 191 persons died in a way. Actual data is still unknown. A lot of deportees were forced to work in harsh conditions in mines, plants and construction sites. Up to 45,000 displaced people died of hunger and disease during the first two years of expulsion. The Russian Federation became the successor of the USSR. Its government's attitude towards Ukrainians went even further than the Stalin's regime. In his speech on February 21, 2022, Vladimir Putin said that Moscow aims for the denazification of Ukraine. Right after that, Russian forces started a full-scale invasion. They quickly showed what Kremlin means by denazification. It means rape, torture and executions of civilians. In response to these actions on April 14, 2022, the Ukrainian parliament adopted a resolution on a genocide performed in Ukraine by Russian Federation. The document states that actions and statements of Russian government showcase the existence of an official policy of the Russian state and non-recognition of the right of Ukrainian people for self-identification, self-determination and thus Ukrainian people's right for existence. The resolution stresses that Russian forces in Ukraine act with intention to partially or completely eliminate the Ukrainian nation as a distinct national community.